Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are going to get into biomolecules, also called macromolecules. And again, this is just a short review series. I'm going to go through this as quickly as possible. So the basics of biomolecules. First of all, what are they? They are molecules of life. Bio is life. Molecules are small things, little compounds of all atoms put together. Molecules of life. They are also large molecules. If they are called macromolecules, macro means large, whereas micro would mean small. Macromolecules are large molecules. So these are large molecules that are keeping us alive and all living things are made of these par uh, particles. So they are organic molecules because they contain carbon and specifically they're containing carbon to hydrogen bonds. And you'll see that a lot as we go through the, these. Um, there are four different types. We have nucleic acids, lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. They all contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I call that CHO, C-H-O. We're not going to bark right now. So they all contain CH and O. So let's start off with carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are sugars. They are starches. They are short-term energy storage. There's a lot of alliteration there. Sugar, short-term, starch. They all start with S's. Try to keep that in mind. These are the main source of energy for animals like us, also many plants. So these contain the elements C, H, and O, but there is something special about carbohydrates because they contain C, H, and O in a one to two to one ratio of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That means that there is twice as much hydrogen as carbon and oxygen. So a great example is glucose C6, H12, O6, 6, 12, 6. If you divide those all by 6, you would get 1 to 2 to 1. That is a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. It just means that there's twice as much hydrogen as carbon and oxygen. Um, they're often ring shaped in structure. So you can see in this little picture right here, this is a ring in chemistry. Yes, it's more of a hexagon, but this is what we call a ring. It's a sugar stop sign. I'm trying to keep that alliteration theme going. So short term sugar stop sign. That's what they kind of look like, right? Um, the monomer or one piece, mono is one, mer is piece, one piece of a carbohydrate is called a monosaccharide or one sugar. Saccharide is a sugar. So a monosaccharide is one piece of a carbohydrate. A lot of carbohydrates end in O's, O-S-E, glucose, fructose, sucrose. All of these are sugars. They are all carbohydrates. They all end in O-S-E. So a lot of things that are sugars end in O-S-E. They are the main component of the cell wall. So in plants, we have cellulose, O-S-E. There's that ending again for you. Um, also in chitin, and chitin is going to be in some insects and also uh, things like fungi. So they're the main component of cell walls, of cellulose and chitin. Um, they're also found in foods that we eat, like cereals and breads and pasta, fruits like that. Um, sugars get kind of a bad rap for being like, quote, bad for you. That's not true. Everything in moderation. That's the key. Okay. But just remember that they are in like starchy or very, if you hear like carbohydrate, carbo loading for people who are runners or athletes, that's your carbs, your short-term energy, your sugars. Okay. Next is going to be lipids. So lipids are fats. If you think about liposuction, L-I-P, that prefix means fat. It's literally sucking the fat out of your body, liposuction. So lip, L-I-P, that means fat. So lipids are just fats. They are long-term energy storage. And this is because they have super long chains. And to break each one of these bonds as they're being digested takes a long time. So they provide long-term energy. Their elements are CH and O. And we saw that over here as well in carbohydrates. But they have CH and O. And you notice there's nothing special about them here. There's no special ratio. That's only for carbs. Lipids do not have that special ratio. It's just CH and O. Okay, the monomer here is a triglyceride, and tri means three, so like we have one, two, three fatty acid tails on the glycerol backbone here. Okay, so the way that I like to remember this, like this was sugar, stop sign, short term, okay, and then monosaccharide, one sugar, and this is a sugar. For lipids, I like to think if lipids are fat, right? And we have a triglyceride. If you're really, 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 really fat, perhaps you might try to lose weight. Try triglyceride fat. If that helps you, cool. If it doesn't, cool. Um, so it's a glycerol backbone that has three fatty acid tails. That's where the tri, the three, comes from. Um, so fats, you might hear them talked about as um, saturated or unsaturated or even trans fats. Trans fats are the bad ones that are not naturally occurring. So saturated and unsaturated is just talking about the number of hydrogens. 
So if it is saturated, it has as many hydrogens as possible. And if it is unsaturated, it means that somewhere there is a carbon to carbon double bond and it is missing some of the potential hydrogens. It also changes the shape and the structure obviously. Um, lipids are the main component of the cell membrane around every single cell that is ever a cell for always and forever. That is the phospholipid bilayer. It literally says lipid in the name. Um, and it's also found in foods like butter, olive oil, coconut oil, things like that. We have some fats that are solid at room temperature like butter and coconut oil. These are our uh, saturated fats. They are more brick-like. And then our unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature. That's things like olive oil and avocado oil. Last two here, we have proteins. Okay, proteins act as enzymes. They do a whole bunch of things, but they mainly act as enzymes for the intents and purposes of this unit. Okay, so enzymes are little tiny molecules, proteins, that speed up chemical reactions, okay? So that's what proteins do, they act as enzymes. Proteins can also be structural components. That's what makes up all the parts of your body and all the parts of other organisms as well. Here our elements are a little bit different. We have CHO, but now we're adding some things. We have CHO, so carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and now we're adding nitrogen and sometimes sulfur. So that's the N and the S. I like to also think about protein or proteins ends with an NS, NS, chons, okay? NS, proteins, chons trying to help you remember the elements, okay? So here we have nitrogen and sulfur being added in. So the monomer, one piece of a protein is an amino acid, amino acid. And I like to think protein, teens like to make A's in school, right? Amino acid, proteins like A's, amino acids. Again, if that's stupid and doesn't help you, cool, never use it. For me, it's helpful. Okay, um, all of these proteins, all these little amino acids, these little chains of amino acids are held together by peptide bonds. That's why sometimes you might hear proteins being referred to as a polypeptide. Poly means many, and the peptide is the name of the bond that holds amino acids together. So if we have many peptides, then we have a full protein because several amino acids put together would make a full protein. Um, just like with carbohydrates, we have a special ending here. Again, this is just like the generality. This is most things. It's not the rule. Every single protein does not end with an ASE, just like every single sugar does not end with an OSE, but it's very common that they do. So things that end in ASE are things like lipase, protease. These are all enzymes. They are proteins. They end in ASE. That might help you to differentiate some of the molecules. So proteins that act as enzymes speed up chemical reactions. And how do they do that? They do it by lowering the activation energy. This is essentially the energy that's needed to get started in a reaction. Imagine climbing like a big hill versus going over a speed bump. The one where you have a speed bump, you're gonna be able to go over it a lot faster. You need less energy to get started. Whereas with the hill, you have to expend more energy going up in order to come back down the other side. Here, this is a little bit easier. So when you add in an enzyme to a reaction, the reaction will always take place, but adding in the enzyme will make sure that it happens at a faster rate. This is lowering the activation energy. Um, and I like to think about enzymes as speeding things up. They get things done. They kick some ace. Corny, but you're not here for a bad time. You're here for a corny time. That's okay. Okay, nucleic acids, last one. This is your genetic information. We have DNA and we have RNA. Those are the main classes of nucleic acids. DNA, RNA, the NA, spoiler alert, stands for nucleic acid. So DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA is ribonucleic acid. So here we have a difference of this one has um, less oxygen than this one, double-stranded, single-stranded. You'll learn about that in future units. Okay, the elements here, we are changing things up a little bit. We have C-H-O-N and now we're adding a P. Okay, C-H-O-N-P, chomp, something like that. Okay, C-H-O-N-P, these are the only ones that have a P. They can sometimes have an S, but they always have a P. That's the phosphorus. And this is this little group right here. This is a phosphate group. And this little P right here is the phosphorus. And this is the structure of a nucleic acid, specifically a nucleotide. Okay, so that is the monomer here. The one piece monomer is a nucleotide. This is the structure of a nucleotide. It has three different parts. We have a phosphate group here. We have a five carbon sugar. It's either ribose or deoxyribose, depending on which molecule we're talking about. And we have a nitrogenous base. This is a fancy word. It literally means it's a thing that has nitrogen in it. Cool. 
don't let that scare you nitrogenous that is a bougie way of saying this thing right here has nitrogen in it and that's usually represented as an a a t a g or a c for adenine thymine guanine and cytosine and this is the only biomolecule that is not found in the cell membrane so proteins are used in the membrane for transport. Lipids make up the main structure, the phospholipid bilayer of the membrane, and then carbohydrates are used in cell-to-cell -cell recognition, okay? So nucleic acids are the only ones that you will not find in a cell membrane or the phospholipid bilayer. That's a common question on exams, okay? So that's it. That's the four. I went through this as fast as I can for you guys. Carbohydrates, sugars, CHO, one to two to one ratio, super important. Lipids, they're fats, CHO, no special ratio. We got proteins, CHON, sometimes S. They are enzymes, they speed things up, okay? And nucleic acids, CHONP, they're the only ones that have a P, the only ones that are not in the cell membrane, and that's your genetic information. I hope that this was helpful and good luck out there. I'll see you in the next one.